me a ghost story that sounds completely unbelievable but is entirely true i'll go first so i don't know how crazy or unbelievable my story is but it really happened so i'm just gonna tell it back in 2004 i was stationed in ramadi iraq with the second battalion 11th marine regiment which was an artillery unit based out of camp pendleton california during our time there we served as convoy security from Ramadi all the way to Baghdad for various convoys. That was our mission while we were out there. Um, the base we were sent to was called Junction City. This was a Army, Marine, Navy compound that was across the river from the city of Ramadi. And the base we we're on was a prior Iraqi police compound that we had taken over. So it was a pretty big base, you know, several miles around the outside, you know, high razor wire fences, outpost artillery to respond to incoming fire, things like that. But several thousand troops stationed there. And so this was, again, 2004. And if you remember 2004, the Iraq war was very hostile. It was a very big year for combat. Um, April of that year, there was a big battle in the city of Ramadi. And then in December of that year, Operation Phantom Fury is when we took the city of Fallujah itself. And that was during the time period I was there in Iraq. So just to give some background of when I was there. So to get to my story, um, back then when you wanted to call home, and I don't know what the protocols are now or how things go now, but when you wanted to call home, you had to go to a phone center. These were typically rooms that had about 20 phones in them that um, people would sign up, sign their name and wait in line. Typically, uh, each phone call was allowed 15 minutes. So when someone came out, they'd call the next name on the list and they'd say, hey, hey, so-and-so, you're up. And you'd go in there and you'd punch in a calling card number that you had prepaid minutes and then you'd call home. And you'd have 15 minutes to call as many people as you could or just stay on the phone calling home, right? So I had made a routine that at 2 a.m. I would go and make my phone calls because 2 a.m. Iraq time was like 5 p.m. back home, something like that, you know, but nighttime there was daytime here, you know, type of thing. So I wasn't waking anybody up and also the base uh, everyone was sleeping at night. So those phone centers were much less busy because nobody was trying to wake up at 2 a.m. to call home more often than not. So I had a one-year-old son at the time and I just wanted him to hear my voice. You know, was, you just never knew when your last day could be out there. So I wanted to call as often as I could, you know, just to give peace of mind to my family that everything was okay, even if it was for a one-minute phone call. And so I'd have my alarm set for 2 a.m. every day and at 2 a.m. I'd wake up, I'd grab my rifle, sling it over my shoulder and begin my walk a couple hundred yards to this army phone center to call home. And so I to make this walk, you'd have to walk across this open field. You know, some there was some grass, but there was no obstructions in, in this field. It was an open field desert type of environment. But other than that, there was nothing across these fields, just a worn out path from hundreds of Marines and soldiers, you know, walking back and forth between the barracks and the phone centers. And obviously, you know, you're in a time of war. You're not walking with flashlights or things like that. And the only light there was the moonlight, which in the desert was more than enough. It's pr plenty bright. It always seemed like it was a full moon, never a cloud in the sky. So I'm making my walk. I'm making my walk across this couple hundred yard a journey to from my barracks to the phone center and I'm looking at the ground I'm looking at the ground not paying attention just kind of looking at my next step looking at my feet staring at the ground just thinking about whatever who I'm going to call or you know things like that well about halfway there I run into somebody like physically shoulder to shoulder and I get knocked back I, I go I get I get hit shoulder to shoulder and I say oh my god I'm so sorry and I, I'm immediately feeling like, oh, my God, who did I just run into? Who did I, you know, I'm an idiot. I'm staring at the ground. And I reach for this person's, like, uniform to grab something to keep them from falling. But there's nobody there. And I'm looking, and there's just no one there. And so I freeze with my arms up, like, grabbing. 
and I'm listening for like somebody rolling in the grass or somebody stumbling, but there's nobody there. And I sit there for another 10, 15 seconds. I even say hello and there's no one there. And so I don't spend a whole lot of time because now I'm kind of like embarrassed. I'm like, I wonder if somebody is watching me like talk to myself in this open field. So I, I just continue walking. So I, I walk another hundred, hundred yards or so, and I get to the phone center. And when I get there, the door is padlocked and there's a sign on the door that says, um, this phone center is out of service until further notice. So for those who were out there, those who were deployed, or for those who don't know, um, when that happened, it was typically because there were casualties on the base that particular day or the day prior or recently. And they shut the phone centers down as a way to make sure the news of the fallen soldiers or the Marines doesn't get back to the next of kin before they can do it properly. And so it, it was a common thing in 2004. It seemed like every other week the phones were down three, four, five days at a time, which, you know, you know, isn't a big deal if you're considering the alternative to being one of those casualties and you completely respected those families and your phone call, you know, minor inconvenience, but you would always, your heart would always be with those families who were getting those, that news about their loved ones. So the phone center was closed, which it often was. And so I'm walking back, you know, mild inconvenience that I wasn't able to make my phone call, but I'm sitting there thinking to myself, what if the person I ran into, the spirit that I ran into was a soldier, Marine, sailor who, who was going through their routine still of calling home and they didn't realize that they had passed. And that's who I bumped into that day or that night on my way to make my phone call. And I've never forgotten that. And Sometimes it gives me chills thinking about, um, I never pinpointed the day. I never pinpointed who the casualty might've been, but, um, yeah, that, that's what happened to me. And it was very real and it happened. So there's my story.